If you grew up in the 2000s, there are a few things that we all hated. Your PS2 doing this, Dinkelberg, that episode where Spongebob got left in a weird town and had to wait for hours for the bus, and this man. I hated him. I hated him with a passion. I hated everything about him. His face, his hair, the fact that he was from my city, the fact that he had a leader around his arm. I love his theme music though. Whenever I saw him on my screen, I just got angry. Look, heal Randy York, I could tolerate him. Alright, like it's fine. Respect to Randy, but this piece of shit. Oh my god, the only other person I've hated in a show or a movie as much as I hated Edge was Joffrey in Game of Thrones. Edge was the ultimate opportunist, aka Mr. Screw over every single wrestler you ever liked. Nobody was safe, just when you least expected it, just when you thought you were safe, out he came, ready to ruin everything. Now I'm all grown up, now I love it, I respect it, it was genius, Edge is a GOAT. But man, as a little kid watching wrestling, this man was my arch nemesis, I bought Edge action figures just so I could whip his ass every day. Every WWE game, Edge was the first wrestler who I was going to beat up. So how did Edge become so crazy? How did Edge go from haha look it's Edge he's pretty cool to why the hell is Edge here no please get away. Well Edge became Mr. Money in the Bank and the rest was history. So in a few weeks it's WWE Money in the Bank. That's going to be something interesting. The Money in the Bank now has been a match for over 15 years. I remember when this match was first announced. GG, I feel old now. Over the years there have been some amazing winners and cash-ins, but there is one man that I associate with the match and that briefcase. There is one man who took that briefcase and he just ran with it. There is only one true Mr. Money in the Bank, and that is the Rated R Superstar, Edge. It was WrestleMania 21, the first ever Money in the Bank ladder match. Kane came out with ladders on fire, shouts and Benjamin went crazy, but at the end of the match, it was Edge sitting there holding that briefcase, hugging it like it was his mom. He was the first ever Money in the Bank winner. Nobody really knew what this meant. They said, oh, anywhere, anytime the Money in the Bank winner can cash in and get a title shot. But we didn't know anything. Was it really anywhere, anytime? Did he have to schedule it? What were the rules? When was it going to happen? So months went by and Edge slowly just became more savage and savage. First he beat up Kane and took his girl in kayfabe, then he beat up the guy who he took Lita from in real life. Every week all you see is Edge just screwing over Matt Hardy or some other wrestler and just making out with Lita, of course while carrying around the briefcase. He sent Matt Hardy packing to Smackdown after winning a ladder match in which the money in the bank was on the line, so first he took his girl and then he sent him to another show. GG. We got the debut of the cutting edge and edge was just simply doing his thing. Eventually edge was in a feud with Ric Flair and it was like okay that's cool don't get me wrong we still hated edge but I was like and eh, he's just beating up old man Ric Flair who cares do your thing edge. The reason we didn't care was during this time our lord and savior John Cena was the WWE champion and man Super Cena was in full effect. Hide your kids, hide your wife and especially hide your heels cause Cena was beating all the heels. Spinner belt was spinning to full effect, JBL clapped. Jericho clapped, Christian sent to TNA, Kurt Angle c -c 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 clapped. Nobody, and I mean nobody, was stopping John Cena. It was New Year's Resolution 2006, the first pay per view of the new year. Cena had been WWE champion since April of 05. Nine months later, he was still champ. And this pay per view was okay. Triple H beat Big Show, Edge bashed in Old Man Flair's head with a briefcase, but I was just excited because once again it was time for Super Cena to shine. He was in the Elimination Chamber match. Now, Mind you, normally as a kid, I would be scared if my favorite was in an Elimination Chamber match, but Cena, come on man, Cena never lost. What is losing? Cena doesn't even know how to lose. And which bum was really gonna beat him in the Elimination Chamber match? Carlito? Bum. Chris Masters? Bum. Kane? Don't make me bring Katie Vick back in here. HBK? Fam, HBK just lost to Hogan a few months ago. Kurt Angle? Cena already beat you. Me and my friends were just chilling. Cena was gonna walk in there and destroy everyone. Easy win, easy dub life was good and then the match happened and all you see is Cena looks like this. But it was fine, it was fine, sure Kurt was on one and had Cena in the ankle lock, switching music to Cena's face, but he survived it all, just like usual. And then it was just Cena and Carlito with Chris Masters. There was no stress, even little me was chilling and as you guessed it, John overcame the odds and all was right in the world. Okay so the pay per view is over, all my friends are getting ready to leave and then all you hear is this. Oh look, Vince is out here to congratulate Cena, yay the boss is going to give Cena some props, it's all good, I'm, I'm down for this. And at that very moment, 
nothing was the same ever again. See, Vince did congratulate him for sure, but he also said that Cena had one more match. Out came Edge. Yes, Edge, the man who was out here wrestling old man Ric Flair earlier, is now finally cashing in his money in the bank. Nine months later, nine months, half of us forgot what the briefcase was even about. At this point, it was just an accessory. Edge never teased it, they slowly stopped bringing it up. It was more a weapon than anything, but now it was time. Edge was having a WWE Championship match at the end of a pay-per-view. Cena is in the ring looking like he took a shower in tomato sauce. Edge Edge hands over the case to Vince, he goes in that ring, and it was like the world had stood still. This was it, the first Money in the Bank cash in. Nobody knew what to expect, nobody knew when it was going to happen, nobody knew how, but here it was, 9 months later. John Cena, after wrestling in the Elimination Chamber match for 30 minutes and bleeding everywhere, had to wrestle Edge for the title. At this very moment, little me truly learned, life was indeed not fair. Cena somehow got up and spear. One. Two, okay, Cena, wow, Super Cena kicked out. Edge was shook and I had hope. I believed. Maybe there was a chance because like I said, I didn't think it was possible for John Cena to lose. He was just so OP and I'm like, maybe he can do this. So Cena gets up again and bang another spear. One, two, three. Edge stole the WWE Championship. Edge walked in there, handed the briefcase over, speared Cena two times, and simply became the champion. It was the most surreal thing ever. It was perfect. Edge became the ultimate opportunist on that night. Edge also became my arch nemesis. It hurt. It was so random, so out of nowhere, but so perfectly executed. Nobody saw it coming, and since it was a first, it was just unbelievable. The same night, Edge had a match with Flair for the IC title, but he got himself DQ'd rather quickly into the match. But it all made sense. He had bigger plans than winning the IC title and beating up Ric Flair. He had way bigger aspirations. This match perfectly sold just how powerful the Money in the Bank truly was, and this elevated the Money in the Bank to arguably the most important match every year, right there with the Rumble. And after this night, oh my god, Edge was in full effect. Just when you thought he couldn't get more slimy and villainous, he went out there and he went full rated R mode. Live sex celebration on Raw, beating up old man Ric Flair again in a TLC match. Sure, he lost a title to Cena a few weeks later, but Edge didn't let up. Once he became champion, he just got even better and he just reached another level. He was out here beating Foley in a hardcore match, beating up ECW legends at one night stand. Edge truly became the rated R superstar. In 2006, the Money in the Bank winner was RVD. RVD did not do what Edge did in cashing in randomly. Instead, he challenged Cena to a match at ECW One Night Stand. RVD wanted a fair and square match, but he wanted a home field advantage. And they had an amazing match with one of the most wild crowds ever. Once again, I was a kid, so I was on Team Cena. At first, I was confident. And then the match was about to start, and the crowd was going crazy, throwing toilet paper at Cena, throwing his shirt back. If Cena wins, we riot. Yeah, Cena looked scared. So I was definitely scared, but Cena was holding it down, right? He can win this, he's fighting, he's doing his thing. And then a random man walks in, motorcycle helmet on, and spears Cena through a table. He takes off the helmet, and who could it possibly be? Edge. Edge, man, why? It wasn't even your cash in. Why are you here? Why are you interfering? Edge wasn't even the Money in the Bank holder anymore. He wasn't even the Money in the Bank match, but he still had to come in and wild out during the Money in the Bank cash in match. RVD hits the frog splash, wins. Two Money in the Bank cash ins later, and Edge was involved in both. A few weeks later, Edge becomes the WWE Champion by pinning RVD, the same guy who he helped to win the title in the first place. The ultimate opportunist, what else can I say? Edge then had a proper reign with the title, the legendary feud with Cena, which involved him slapping Cena's dad in his own house. Cena did eventually win back the title, but it wasn't easy. Edge proved that he was a top tier star and that he could be the biggest heel in the company, and at this point, he basically was. Edge then went on to form rated RKO, feuded with DX and it was cool, but I was just happy he was away from Cena. He was away from the title, he was doing his own thing, go become tag team champion, you do you, Edge. And fast forward to WrestleMania 23. Money in the Bank 3. 
and they just had to throw Edge back in there. My biggest fear going into this show was legit. Please not him. Please not Edge. Get him away from there. I hope Randy turns on him and RKO's him. Can Edge please just fall off a ladder and go through 50 ladders? Anyone but Edge. So it was time for the match. Everyone came out and just like every other Money in the Bank, it was awesome. But every time Edge was standing, every time Edge was moving, my heart was racing because I knew that slimy mother Knucker at any time could win the match. The match went on and on. The more scared I got that Edge was actually going to win. And then it happened. Edge got placed on a ladder outside the ring. He was laying there and inside the ring was none other than Jeff Hardy. And Jeff Hardy the legend jumped off one of the tallest ladders I've ever seen in my life and leg drops Edge straight to hell. It was amazing. I was jumping for joy. Did Jeff Hardy take himself out of the match? Yes, but who cares? Edge got stretchered out and couldn't win and that's all that mattered. Mr. Kennedy ended up winning the match. I could care less. Whatever happened, at least Edge didn't walk out Mr. Money in the Bank. My arch nemesis lost. All was right in the world. Fast forward a few weeks. I come home from school and it was time to watch the raw replay from the night before. And what do I see? Mr. Kennedy versus Edge for the money in the bank briefcase. Nah, nah man, it can't be, right? No way. And all you see is Spear. Once again, one, two, three. Edge again is Mr. Money in the Bank. This man got stretchered out of the Money in the Bank match. He basically got killed and now a few weeks later he's Mr. Money in the Bank again. There was no stopping him. It didn't make sense. Somehow it always worked out for him and now he was back. He was coming for Cena, wasn't he? It was my worst nightmare all over again. During this time, SmackDown was popping. Batista vs Undertaker was awesome, Taker won at Mania, Batista speared him off the stage at Backlash, it was a draw, and now on free TV to settle the score, on Friday Night SmackDown, Batista vs Undertaker in a steel cage match. Now, me and my friends were so excited for this, some of us wanted Batista to win, some wanted Taker, but we loved them both so it didn't really matter, we just wanted an awesome match. And at the end of the match, both men, wink wink, hit the floor at the same time. Poor Batista couldn't get it done. He was so close, for the second straight time he got a draw against The Undertaker. But ah, it was an amazing match, something I'll never forget. Okay, show's over. Undertaker is about to walk backstage, cause you know, dead men, they gotta go home too. And out came Mark Henry to attack him. I was indifferent, I was like, okay, whatever Mark, you wanna beat up Undertaker, go ahead, it's fine, cause next week when The Undertaker is back to 100%, you're done, it's over. So Mark destroys him, Undertaker is a mess in the ring, and I'm like, okay, Undertaker vs Mark Henry, that's the next feud. Whatever, I'm down. And then all you hear is this. You think you know me? No, no, not this guy. Not, no, please, not this guy. No, it was him. No, like how? How is this possible? You're on Raw. Why do you have to come to SmackDown? This was supposed to be my safe space. Friday nights on UPN, my safe space. No edges allowed. But here he is. Out he comes with the Money in the Bank briefcase. Shades of New Year's Revolution 2006 all over again. Oh my god, here we go again. He cashes it in. He hands over the briefcase, he's screaming, Cole is screaming, even JBL, the heel commentator is screaming saying not this way Edge, not this way, Taker is a mess, the referee doesn't even want to start the match, but he has no choice, Edge just attacks him like a shark, sure Taker kicks out, but it doesn't matter, Taker tries sitting up, but Edge with the spear, 1, 2, 3, Edge was now the world heavyweight champion. Yo man, it didn't matter, Raw, Smackdown, ECW, doesn't matter if you're Super Cena, Mr. 420 RVD, or even a dead man, Edge was gonna Edge. I was just numb to the pain. He truly was the ultimate opportunist, there was no escaping him. I hope now you can see why I and all the other people my age hated Edge so much. As I got older, like I said, I loved it, I laughed when I look back at it, it was amazing, he was a perfect character and actor, he was so good at his role, but man, as a kid, it was just pure hatred. You were never safe. That alone makes Edge Mr. Money in the Bank, but it doesn't stop there because shout out to Karma, at least in 2008, Edge got a taste of his own medicine. He was world heavyweight champion, Batista beat him up on Raw 
and out came CM Punk cashing in his money in the bank and Punk took a page out of Edge's book and became world champ. In 2008, Edge lost a brutal ladder match to Jeff Hardy and right after, CM Punk cashed in on Hardy, another money in the bank match that involved Edge. And then in 2010, the Smackdown after WrestleMania 26, Chris Jericho cuts a promo about how he beat Edge to retain the world title at WrestleMania. Edge comes out, destroys Jericho, allowing Jack Swagger to come out and cash in the money in the bank. From 2005 till 2010, Edge was involved in every single money in the bank moment. But to be honest, it doesn't matter. The moments from 05 to 07 alone were just legendary. Edge used the Money in the Bank briefcase and made himself a legend. Without a doubt, he is the ultimate opportunist and the true Mr. Money in the Bank. When I think of Money in the Bank, the first person that I think of is without a doubt, Edge. But to be honest, I blame Matt Hardy. If Matt Hardy just beat Edge at Raw Homecoming and won the briefcase back in 2005, all of this could have been avoided. But no, he just had to lose. But hey man, because of Edge, we had a lit childhood. So how can I hate? Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Wrestling Gifts. I provide some quality content on other platforms too, okay? Follow my boy Dima Designs. He made the fire thumbnail. He is just way too elite at design. So check him out. Stay tuned for more content. Like it if you like it. Dislike it if you don't. Subscribe to stay up to date. And I'll be back with another episode very soon. Thank you.